and gauge quantum drive. Before we get into the episode, Katie has trivia. I sure do. And I remembered this time. You did. <laughs> I have a bit of trivia, but it's mostly a bit of trivia that I selfishly want to put in here, which is you should start trending hashtag renew the Orville everywhere you post on the internet. <laughs> so the trivia is that you do that and then hopefully we get a season four because I trivia feel like is more a call to action. Yeah, than anything. This, this is a yeah. call to action. We need to get this show renewed for another season because did you watch this episode? That's uh, yeah. It's a rhetorical I hope that's question. Rhetorical. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I just I have to sneak that in there because I think you know the more noise we make as fans, you know, there's a demand for it. So hopefully there's a season four announcement. Fingers crossed on Absolutely. the way. Absolutely. All right, trivia. Gordon and Charlie are singing a song together at Kelly's family vacation home. And if you're curious about the title of the song, it is a Simon and Garfunkel song called "Flowers Never Bend When the Rain Fall." Hmm. I was wondering what it was. I had a feeling you would tell me. <laughs> yeah, that was an immediate like on Google. Like, what song is this? Uh, yeah. I really do enjoy Simon and Garfunkel, though. That's a yeah, that was a, a nice rendition, too. I had mm -hmm. no idea that Ann Winters had chops. No, I mean, there, I think this cast is just talented in so many areas. It's ridiculous. It's not fair Full to the surprises. rest of us. <laughs> it's really not. No. <laughs> when Ed finally confronts Talia at the end of this episode. He says, a bad penny always turns up, mm. which made me want to look up the meaning because I'm like, I've never heard that before, but it sounds like it's a meaning of something. So it means someone might visit you uninvited at the last minute, and it's an old English proverb. Mm. Okay. I had a little bit of a wonder about that too, so yeah, I, I appreciate that. An unwanted person or one who appears during a good event and disrupts a peaceful environment. So I just thought it was interesting because, you know, that's that's some shade that he threw at Talia. <laughs> Talia the bad penny. Yep, the bad penny showing up. Also, at the end of this episode, Isaac states that he served with Ensign Burke for 257 days, 17 minutes, and 49 seconds, which means that she served on the Orville less than a year and gives us an idea of how much time has passed in this season. Mm, yeah, I believe... This happens roughly a year after the battle with the Kalon. Mm -hmm. It's just always interesting to me to be like, okay, so we see the episodes, just the time that has passed between, mm -hmm. you know, because sometimes my brain's like, has it been a day? Has it been months? So it right. just, it's not like every episode is a day in the same week. Yeah. And we're following them in real time. So it's a... Besides, if you could hold your tears in during that scene, it was an interesting tidbit about the time frame that had elapsed since Ensign Burke had served on the Orville. Yeah. Had. Oh, okay. We have a lot to talk about this episode. <laughs> Last but not least, Rob found this little bit of trivia. When the Orville discovers the krill Mocklin Alliance, Ed mentions the Maltov Ribbentrop which is a non-aggression pact between Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union in 1939 that enabled those two powers to partition Poland between them. It is also referred to as the Hitler-Stalin pact and the Nazi-Soviet alliance. Little history. Little his That felt like a history class right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I remember he mentioned it in the episode, and there was just so much going on in this episode, oh, yeah. so I'm glad that you picked up on this, but that's super interesting little tidbit they snuck in there yeah comparing the krill and mocklins to the nazis in the soviet union <sighs> there's a lot to unpack <laughs> this this episode had a lot of complicated relationship things in it and uh i mean you have to look at too i'm gonna get ahead of myself but also the union and the kalon working together mm -hmm. so there's a lot there's a lot in this episode so those are the fun facts and we're gonna jump into guest stars a lot of familiar faces returned for this episode. So instead of going back through everybody, we talked pretty in depth about almost all of these people in past episodes of Quantum Drive. So go listen to the past podcast or watch the videos on YouTube. Michaela McManus was back as Talia, Ted Danson, Victor Garber, Graham Hamilton, Ren T. Brown, Lisa Baines, lots of familiar faces in makeup and out of makeup. So mm -hmm. just a jam-packed episode of cameos. And there was only one other guest star that I wanted to mention and that is reggie davis who played dr kalba am i saying it right 
That sounds right to me. Okay, I wanted to make sure. And he has a little bit of Star Trek lineage. He played a Klingon first officer in Star Trek Enterprise in 2001. And they've also done a ton of other work over the years. But that Star Trek tie-in, I had to sneak in. Absolutely. Yeah, I saw a lot lot of voice work uh, specifically Mm -hmm. on the IMDb for him. So those are all the fun facts and guest stars for this episode. Hey, thank you so much for watching. This is just a segment of the full podcast that Rob and I do. So if you want to hear more of our thoughts and full episode discussions, go to thegeekgeneration.com slash quantum drive.